What's happening guys? I am actually setting up a studio. It got me thinking, why not share that with you as well? And this is what our base layer looks like. This is our room. As you were looking at it, here was that little window, etc. We were facing this way in that image. We're gonna have a standing desk in around the center of the room. We're also gonna have sound panels on the back wall at the top, but also at the bottom and on this wall over here as well as in this corner, which is gonna create a lot of echo, and on this wall. We're also gonna put sound panels in this little hallway area, which leads into the room. We can actually have our camera at this kind of position over here. Also implement a structure above all of this, which is going to be an overhead rig. We're also going to carpet this floor to an extent because we are dealing with a tiled floor. We're also gonna be custom building these sound panels because sound foam is extremely expensive. Here's a more detailed image of the overhead mount we're gonna build with galvanized steel pipes. So we can hang our lights from above and save a lot of floor space. So we'll have our main light, remember our table, would actually be below here our standing desk which we're also going to build the desktop for and then we can also add additional lights behind here for example hair lights from the back and we could also mount professional microphones from above but the first stop is actually going to be a fabric shop Here's our mat, and this is a standing desk. I bought the frame alone without the actual top. The top is actually over there. Just a note on that, it's much cheaper if you just buy the desk frame and then do the top yourself. So that is the desk so far. Now what we're actually gonna do is the top of the desk. You bought a piece of pine, and now I'm gonna go through the process of just finishing that piece of wood. Another benefit is that then you can choose the size and the shape of your tabletop. This is a good audio test. You can hear the echo in here is extreme. So this is just the stand-in door. Don't worry about that tabletop. We're actually gonna be putting a soundboard in this corner along there. We're gonna be putting one at the top here, another one along here, and then again on this corner, this corner, and lastly, one is gonna run long ways up this corner. Bug is flying in my face. Yeah, I had him as well inside my glasses. <laughs> so to show you really quick how this is gonna work, these little end pieces, you can see a whole lot of them here, they make up the top, the top and the bottom of what are going to be our frame. So this is one frame, and then these are what we're going to pull the carpet, you can see the carpet pieces here. We are going to pull the carpet around these frames and on the inside of these frames, we are going to have this insulation foam. This insulation foam combined with the carpet should give us very, very good noise control, especially in the corners. We're actually gonna sand these rough edges off, screw into there, and then we should have a good frame. And from there, we can begin a staple gunning the carpet onto these. You can see we have a tiled floor. We found a carpet, 700 Rand, $45, $50. The light 
just got here. The SL60W. If you're looking for one strong continuous light, this is a really good option. So it has to be plugged into the wall. Front here, you can see the softbox P90H. Pretty big softbox. Basically make a cheaper version of an Aperture 120D. And it also has two layers of diffusion, this white panel. There's another one in the center here. A pretty flimsy stand right now. So if you recall, this end of the pole over here is actually going to go into this wall and that pole is going to run across this room and go into the wall up here and then that t-junction bar is going to run from here to that back wall we have designed a clamp and the aim is that we can perhaps hang this light upside down right up in this corner clamp would stem from the pole and hold the aperture here plan for today is we are number one completing seven of these sound panels We have quite a challenge. How do we bracket these onto the wall? This is the back of these sound panels and we're gonna be mounting them in the top corners. And this being the ceiling at the top, imagine this is this board. We're gonna be putting the board into the corner like that. So in order to do that, we have to have little brackets on the side of the board, which is gonna hold it in place onto the long wall. And those brackets are at 45 degrees and it's gonna hold the board in the corner. These brackets over here, and you can see that we've actually made a keyhole. Usually these brackets come with just normal holes like this. What we've gone and done is added a bigger hole towards the bottom. Because we've added this little piece here, once this is, this is already in the wall, we can then hook our bracket and panel onto the wall. So it will go through the bigger hole, but not the smaller hole at the top. So that's a keyhole mechanism which you can use. So that's the plan. Now what we need to do, first have to attach this bracket to the board, because when we do make that angle, we're not gonna be able to reach this screw over here. We first need to attach these screws and then we're gonna bend this inward to 45 degrees. And when we hang it onto the wall, uh, the panel is gonna be at a 45 degree angle. And imagining again, those are the walls. When we hang it using the keyhole mechanism, it's going to sit nicely in the corner of the wall for us. So now we're gonna be attaching the normal side at the bottom. And the reason we're doing that is when we bend it, remember this is going up on the wall, then that bend is gonna be perfectly 45 degrees and we're gonna be able to mount this in, in the corner. And that's about right. Also today we're gonna to be doing poles. So this is where we are with the studio. What I do want to test is the distance from this wall to this wall for our poles. This is actually going to be about here. And that T-junction is going to run a pole to the wall. And then this is going to connect to the long pole, which runs to that wall. And we can hang the lights from there, as well as mics or anything like that. It's also going to be really cool for an overhead camera rig if I want to do something actually on the desk. So if you guys want to do something similar, just buy a good piece of galvanized steel pipe. If you do get a piece of galvanized steel pole and you actually get this cut for you, then what you want to do, maybe you're going to get one probably long piece of pole. And so when you go to the hardware or wherever it is you get this pole, ask them to actually cut your length from the end of the pole. And the reason why is you're going to retain the thread, which you might need, for example, 
in that T-junction we're using. We need the thread. You can also get threaders and put your own thread onto here. But just to save time, cut from the ends in accordance with, with you know, wherever you do need the thread. So you can see we've laid out the poles, the length of where they will be above, but just on the floor. And for example, on this long one, remember here is our little T-junction. But on this long one, it's meant to go into this wall and we have a little bit too much. So we're gonna be cutting this pole so that it will fit nicely. This will be bolted into the wall. We'll actually move this into place already fixed. And number two, you can actually use the tile lines to keep this quite straight. And again, we have a little bit too much. Measured exactly uh, where the, the poles need to go to. Cut off a little piece of the pole. See here, there's a little Allen key hole. And we tighten that onto the pole so that has secured the end. We need to now lift this all the way up and then mark in these holes as to where we're actually going to secure it to the wall. Then we're going to drill holes into the wall, insert roll plugs, and then we're going to drill through here into those roll plugs. So we're going to lift it in one go, mark it, drill it, and then we're going to secure the whole thing in one go as well. So we just finished the overhead rail. It is pretty strong, particularly towards the ends. It's very, very strong. The middle would only really hold a overhead camera rig. That should be absolutely fine. Let me know what you guys think of this idea if you're gonna do something similar. The next big step is position and outline where all the sound boards are gonna go. We have also put on all of the brackets for mounting those. We are gonna begin marking up on the walls and at the bottom of the walls as to where those need to go. And then we're actually going to put in the bolts to the wall and we'll be able to hook those on using that keyhole system. So we are making some progress. There's been a lot of measuring and lining up of everything. We actually put in the roll plugs. That's how we are going to hang all of these sound boards. And we just put together this big one here behind me. We've actually just put a makeshift counterweight on this clamp. This clamp is actually gonna help us get the light off of the floor. We won't have a need for a stand which closes down the space, which you'll know all about if you have a little home studio. Once I finish the desktop, which I'm busy with currently. I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna take all of this out and we're gonna do a sound test with no soundproofing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it all up and we'll do another test. So you guys can hear the difference and if you wanna follow suit on, on doing it this type of way, uh, which can save some money. This is the one we used first, which is 40 grit. So it's gonna take off a lot of wood at first. And now that we've done that, we're gonna actually use this, which is 100 grit, so much finer. It's gonna take off less wood, but give a smoother finish. Now we're just rolling out the carpet, which is gonna stop a lot of sound reflection off of these tiles. So this is 
the sound test without the panels and you can probably hear there is a massive echo and the reason I want to do this test is so that you can see whether or not those panels are actually effective. We're going to swap over to a new clip in a second where I'm going to have all of the panels up and then you're going to be able to hear how that sounds as well. So this is the exact same shot, the camera is the same distance from me but we put up all of the sound panels. There's still a little bit of an echo and it's much more dulled down. I think there is more I could do in some of these corners and perhaps on that opposing wall. So the next big thing we're going to be working on is the overhead light clamp seen us working on. So you can see up here. So as you guys know, usually your light's going to sit something like this. But what we're going to do in this case, remove the light from this spigot and we are going to attach it to the spigot up here. Do you see we have a spigot at the end here? So if you ever do this, you've got to make sure you have that spigot so you can attach the light quite easily to that end. And then you also have your normal adjustment of the light as well. The goal is to actually have it about here as we would probably have it on a, on a floor stand. We want the same thing but from here. So we're going to have to counterbalance figure something out. So that is the light and we were struggling quite a lot with you can see we've got a counterweight here, it's got like a, a, a proper gym weight in it now, but that is supporting the light. But another issue we had, this pole over here can actually extend. And when we extend that, that's great, but that was twisting that section there. That kept twisting and therefore dropping this light down, not keeping it uh, up where it needs to be. So what we did is added a chain to the top there are steel rods in there, so not the best solution, but for now that's going to work. We're about to actually plug in the continuous light up here, so I'm going to probably work the cable around our overhead rig and behind that little wall there. Now it's time for our articulating arm and hair light at the back. Another Godox light and then uses these batteries. These RAV power ones are actually really good. They won't be continuous, but that's actually great for a light at the back of the setup because you don't want wires hanging on that side. I'd like to introduce you to the new shot. We can also bring the camera a lot closer. This actually just gets this top mounted microphone a little bit closer. This is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. That's what all of this has been recorded on. So we don't have any uh, fancy overhead mic or anything yet. And so we've got the Godox SL60W up here. I still have an egg crate on the way, which is gonna chop up and, and just focus that light more here. And I could probably bring this down a little bit. Hair light up top here, also quite bright. I might even use a bit of a smaller light for that position there, but that should create a bit of an outline here and bringing me off of this background at the back. I actually can't see, I don't have a screen and this is on the A7 III. I think we could move the desk uh, more toward the middle of the room. That's gonna create more separation between me and the background. Also, we may use different uh, light sources to create more effects on the wall. I might even do shelving. To be honest, I think just lights on this wall is gonna look a lot better. And we'll do that also on the 50 millimeter lens, which is a longer lens than this. And so I'm gonna end this video with a couple shots of the studio, but I do hope you guys pull little bits and pieces from this if you are creating your own home studio. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have any specific requests, just drop me a comment below. If you did find this helpful, please give it a quick like for me and subscribe to the channel. But until next time, guys, enjoy these last shots and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.